How's it going guys? Johnny here and I'm back with a video on one of the most frequently overlooked and disrespected legends of NBA history. I hadn't posted a video for the last month and I was taking time to focus on work, but now with the NBA season right around the corner, I'm back in full swing and we'll be putting out videos for you guys every week. So without any further ado, let's get into this one. Before high flyers like Russell Westbrook, Blake Griffin, Vince Carter, Sean Kemp, and even Michael Jordan made their debuts in the NBA, there was a 6'8 small forward from the Atlanta Hawks who assaulted the rim with his thunderous slams in such a way that the league had never seen before. Dominique Wilkins, also known as the Human Highlight Film, a man who was ahead of his time with his jaw-dropping athletic ability and terrific finishes above the rim. Dominique had been selected third overall in the 1982 draft by the Utah Jazz, but was later traded to the Atlanta Hawks, whose management had seen superstar potential in the young small forward, and did they ever get it right? Dominique took the NBA by storm, destroying NBA centers and posterizing all those who chose to stand between him and the rim. Just a few years into the league, Dominique was the franchise cornerstone for the Atlanta Hawks, he won the 1985 slam dunk contest over conference rival Michael Jordan, and in the following season, he led the league in scoring with 30.3 points per game. This was a year with scoring juggernauts like Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Dominique outscored all of them that year. Back in those days, any time Dominique and the Hawks matched up against Larry and the Celtics or Michael Jordan and the Bulls, Everyone knew they were in for an epic solo duel between the best wing players in the league. Classic battles where they would score 40 or even 50 points each, trading basket after basket in a display of sheer competitive drive between the two players. The biggest battle came in the form of Game 7 in the 1988 Eastern Conference Semifinals between Bird Celtics and Dominique Hawks, a game that will go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominique finished with 47 points and Bird had 34, with 20 of those coming in the fourth quarter, and the Celtics narrowly beat the Hawks 118-116. By the time the 1990 NBA season had rolled around, Dominique had carried his Hawks to four straight 50-plus win seasons. He was one of the most respected and feared players in the game, but had never managed to get over the hump of winning an NBA championship. In the 1991-92 season, Dominique Wilkins' success came to an abrupt halt when he ruptured his Achilles tendon only halfway through the season. Dominique and the players around the league were devastated by the tragedy. But this did not break Dominique's will and competitive drive. He worked vigorously to make a speedy recovery and to get back to competing for that elusive championship. Dominique was ready at the start of the 92-93 season, and what ensued was one of the greatest comebacks from an Achilles injury the league has ever seen. Dominique looked like his old self, and finished the regular season with averages of 29.9 points per game, 6.8 rebounds, and 3.2 assists while shooting nearly 47% from the field. He also made a career-high 123s on that season on 38% shooting from that distance, officially destroying the myth that Dominique was simply a dunker. Dominique also managed to pass Bob Pettit's 20,880 points to become the Atlanta Hawks' all-time leading scorer. The Hawks had squeaked their way into the playoffs with a 42-40 and record. It was good enough for the 8th seed, but ultimately they were swept three games to zero by Jordan and the defending champion Chicago Bulls. The 93-94 season rolls along, and Dominique continues to assert himself as one of the premier players in the league. But with his contract ending at the end of the season, and Wilkins quickly approaching his 35th birthday, the Atlanta Hawks made a shocking decision by trading their star and former franchise cornerstone for a younger Danny Manning. The move was emotionally devastating to Wilkins, whose heart and soul had been captured by the Atlanta fan base. Wilkins had finished the year strong, averaging nearly 30 points in his final 25 games as an LA Clipper, but after that season was over, Wilkins' career would never be the same. He finished his NBA career as a shell of himself and a journeyman, playing for the Celtics, Spurs, and Magic. As Dominique's career had been nearing an end, the NBA had a historic event. 
The league began celebrating its 50 years in existence in the 1996 season. The NBA held a special ceremony to commemorate the anniversary. In February of 1997, at halftime of the NBA All-Star Game in Cleveland, the NBA announced its 50 greatest players in NBA history, voted by 50 basketball experts from around the league. It was a significant and memorable event as books were signed, stories were told, and the greats of the game were honored. But if you take a look at the list and the men standing there in Cleveland, you'll notice that the NBA, quote, experts, may possibly the greatest snub the league has ever seen. Dominique Wilkins was not there that night. One of only eight players in NBA history to average at least 25 points per game in 10 consecutive seasons. That's a feat scoring legends Kobe Bryant and Larry Bird have never even accomplished. The other seven players who have accomplished that feat were Michael Jordan, Jerry West, Shaquille O'Neal, Carl Malone, Allen Iverson, and LeBron James. That's a pretty dang good company if you ask me. The man known as the human highlight film, the all-time leading scorer in Hawks history, and an NBA slam dunk champion and one of the greatest individual foes of Michael Jordan and Larry Bird in the 80s, was not among the long list of greatest players to ever play. The weird thing is, there wasn't even a controversy or asterisk by any of Dominique's accomplishments. It wasn't like he had gotten into any legal trouble, or used any drugs or performance enhancers, or even had a bad image. No, the voters just simply got it wrong. Very, very wrong. To the extent that leaves you saying to yourself, what were they thinking? Former Boston Celtic player and now general manager Danny Ainge spoke for many great players from Wilkins' playing days when he said, Dominique wasn't selected as one of the top 50 players, but to me, he's top 25. Fortunately, just several years ago, Dominique, the human highlight film, received some well-deserved respect as a statue of him was unveiled in front of the Atlanta Hawks stadium. Hopefully, when the NBA turns 75 in 2021, there will be a new list and the voters get it right this time and put Dominique among the other greats where he belongs.